Welcome back to our Springs Church Leadership Series. I know that's been a while since our last episode, but we're back and in the groove of things again. I want to start by reading to you a few verses of Scripture. Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse 1-8 through 8 says this, For everything there is a season, a time for every activity under heaven, a time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to harvest, a time to kill and a time to heal, a time to tear down and a time to build up, a time to cry and a time to laugh, a time to grieve and a time to dance, a time to scatter stones and a time to gather stones, a time to embrace and a time to turn away, a time to search and a time to quit searching, a time to keep and a time to throw away, a time to tear and a time to mend, a time to be quiet and a time to speak, a time to love and a time to hate, a time for war and a time for peace. Ecclesiastes tells us that there are seasons in life and in ministry, in parenting, in leadership. Things and situations will never stay the same. They're always changing and they're always following the seasons of life. And I love how Ecclesiastes doesn't label some seasons as negative and bad and other seasons as positive and good. Instead, Ecclesiastes makes the case that seasons are neutral and that they're all needed. You can't have a season of harvest without a season of sowing. And you can't have the capacity to keep certain things and callings in your life without the strength to throw away other things and callings that people are trying to put into your life. My father owned a construction company while I was young, and he became a commercial real estate developer later on in his life. And about a year ago, we were talking about leadership and all the responsibility that comes with these types of roles. And he said something that has been very impactful in my life. He said, Michael, you have to learn to look at your progress in life in five-year intervals. And then he went on to say, because seasons come and go, and it takes years of different seasons to get you to the next step in life or in business or in ministry. Man, that is one of the truest statements I have ever heard. Let me read a scripture to you. From the New Testament, Philippians chapter 4, verses 10 through 12 says this. How I praise the Lord that you are concerned about me again. This is Paul speaking. I know you've always been concerned for me, but you didn't have the chance to help me. Not that I was ever in need, for I have learned how to be content with whatever I have. I know how to live on almost nothing or with everything. I have learned the secret of living in every situation, whether it is with a full stomach or empty, with plenty or little. Paul says that he has learned the secret of living in every situation, or you can say every season. Many believers lose out on what God wants to do in them and through them, in business, in parenting, in ministry, at their work, because they get discouraged when they're in a season that they don't understand or they find difficult. And they get paralyzed. They can't work diligently through it. Sometimes they throw in the towel or they get stuck unable to move forward. Paul, on the other hand, is an amazing character study in the Bible. Paul was always anxious and and sometimes even impatient to go and preach the gospel. In fact, when John Mark broke off from him and Barnabas on their missionary journey, Paul was adamant that he didn't want to take John Mark on another trip for the sake of the gospel. Paul was willing to go through beatings and stonings and imprisonments and shipwrecks to spread the truth about Jesus. In fact, most scholars believe that Paul was partially blind because of the stoning that happened to him in Acts chapter 14. And yet, Paul found a doctor named Luke who was willing to travel with him. And he kept going on missionary journey after missionary journey. So you could imagine how difficult it must have been for Paul to end up stuck in prison. Unable to travel. Unable to plant churches feeling unable to fulfill the calling that God had put on his life. And yet Paul says, even in those situations, in those seasons, I'm not being able to go or share about Jesus. He was content. He was able to focus and sit down with some parchments and write letters that would become half the New Testament. He wasn't unproductive in those hard seasons. He wasn't paralyzed with discouragement or frustration. He was able to be content and was able to follow God's lead and direction of what he was being called to do, even though in his own mind, it probably looked so small and insignificant. That's what I want in my life. 
I want to learn to be content in whatever season I am in. But what does Paul mean when he says that he has learned the secret of being content in every situation and in every season? That word content actually means self-sufficient. It means independent of circumstances or surroundings or conditions. It means having sufficiency in oneself. Paul was saying that he arrived at a state where he can say, honestly and truthfully, that he was independent of his position, his circumstances, his surroundings, and of everything that was happening to him. And this wasn't just a statement that Paul wrote. Paul really did live this. Do you remember when Paul and Silas were beaten in Philippi? And then they were put in the stocks and they were left in prison? What a horrific season to be in. And yet at midnight, Paul and Silas were praising and singing songs to God. They were independent of their circumstances. They were self-sufficient. The season they were in did not affect their trust and love for the Lord and their joy in life. They were productive for the kingdom of God even in a season like that. To put it positively, what the apostle says here in Philippians chapter 4 is that he is not mastered or controlled by circumstances. His heart, his faith, his work ethic, his confidence, his joy, his steadfastness is not dominated or shaped by the season he is in. Now, I'd remind you that Paul was actually in prison when he was writing this. He was probably chained to a soldier on his right and then another one on his left. And yet, even in that actual condition, he can say that he is independent of his circumstances. Look back at Philippians chapter 4 with me. Philippians chapter 4, verses 10 through 12. And let's look at it again. How I praise the Lord that you are concerned about me again. I know you've always been concerned for me, but you didn't have the chance to help me. Not that I was ever in need, for I have learned how to be content with whatever I have. I know how to live on almost nothing or with everything. I have learned the secret of living in every situation, whether it is with a full stomach or empty, with plenty or little. Paul says that he had learned the secret of living in every situation. Man, what a statement. You can't just come into this self-sufficiency that Paul's talking about through a prayer or a zap from God. You have to learn it. And how did Paul learn to be content? Two ways. Number one, through experience. 2 Corinthians chapter 12, 7 through 10, Paul says this, Because of these surpassingly great revelations, therefore, in order to keep me from becoming conceited, I was given a thorn in my flesh, a messenger of Satan to torment me. Three times I pleaded with the Lord to take it away from me. But he said to me, My grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly about my weaknesses, so that Christ's power might rest on me. That is why, for Christ's sake, I delight in weaknesses, in insults, in hardships, in persecutions, in difficulties. For when I am weak, then I am strong. God gave Paul a thorn in his flesh. And Paul makes it clear that he didn't like it. He struggled against it. Three times he prayed that God would remove it, but it wasn't removed. Paul wanted to go on preaching and making an impact for the kingdom, but many times he was hindered or he struggled because of the thorn in his flesh. It was keeping him down. But then look at what Paul says in verse 9. Paul was taught by God through the experience of having a thorn in his flesh that God's grace was sufficient for him. Paul came to a place of understanding as a result of his experience of dealing with God through a circumstance that God brought into his life. Paul had learned that God moves powerfully in and through our weaknesses, and that weakness is not something to be afraid of. But he couldn't learn that until he went through a circumstance that taught him by experience. Number one, you learn through experience. But number two, you learn to be self-sufficient and content through working out a great argument. When you read through Paul's writings in the books of Romans or Galatians or Ephesians, he's always working out a great argument 
of why he could be content and self-sufficient as a Christian. And I've learned to do this in my life as well. When I come into worship on Sunday morning or I go and I take a prayer walk around the neighborhood, I talk to God and I work through an argument in my head of why I could be steadfast, joyful, filled with faith, and remain strong in my work ethic even during difficult weeks and really hard seasons. I work out an argument like this. Number one, conditions are always changing. Therefore, I must obviously not be dependent on conditions. Number two, in my argument, what matters most is my soul and my relationship with God. That is the first thing. Number three, God is concerned about me as my father, and nothing happens to me apart from God. Even the very hairs on my head are all numbered, and I cannot forget that. Number four, God's will and God's ways are a great mystery, but I know that whatever he wills or permits is a necessity for my good. Number five, every situation in life is the unfolding of some manifestation of God's love and goodness. Therefore, my business is to look for a manifestation of God's goodness and kindness and be prepared for surprises and blessings because his ways are not my ways and his thoughts are not my thoughts. For example, what was the great lesson that Paul learned when it came to the thorn in his flesh? It was that when he was weak, then he was strong. Paul was taught through physical weakness this manifestation of God's grace. Number six in my argument, I must regard circumstances and conditions not in and of themselves but as part of God's dealing with me in the work of perfecting my soul and bringing me to Christian maturity. And number seven, whatever my conditions may be at this present moment, they're only temporary. They're all passing. They can never rob me of the joy and the glory that ultimately awaits me with Christ. Paul had reasoned and argued with himself and with God like that. It's all over his writings. Paul wasn't just writing his letters for the church, but they were a type of journal for himself as well. You have to learn to reason out a gospel-centered argument in all circumstances and seasons as a believer. You have to learn to do it in worship on Sunday morning or during Wednesday night prayer meetings or in your own prayer time. And when you begin to practice that, whatever season you find yourself in, you will become self-sufficient. The season of life will not master or control you, and you'll find the resolve and the strength to continue on knowing that a change of season is ahead. Thank you, Springs Church, for tuning in this month for our leadership series. And I pray that this quick lesson will be a great blessing to you in the weeks and the months ahead. I look forward to connecting with all of you next month. So God bless.